A highly active monsoon pattern continues in the Rockies. Lots of rain in the south central U.S. and a mild, dry pattern in the northeast. So we dive right down to that surface map. There it is. Thunderstorms just about everywhere you look. The Black Hills, Montana, the Great Basin, Elko, Nevada, even getting some storms. And also the Mojave Desert in California. Storms all the way from Riverside, the mountains just east of there, all the way down through Baja, California. The only area not really getting much is the low deserts of Arizona. Let's take a closer look at that. So we'll give you the political boundaries back. You can see Arizona right there and New Mexico off to the right. These are definitely orographically induced thunderstorms developing on the Mogollon Rim, the higher terrain of the Painted Desert, and the mountains east of Albuquerque. So pretty much anywhere where you have high terrain, that's helping to support the development of this convection. And that these storms are sheared as well. You can see the anvils blowing off to the east, and the cells themselves have a very slow westward drift. As we said, not much going on in the valleys. There's Phoenix, clear as a bell. A little bit of moderate cumulus around Tucson. Could see some showers and storms maybe a little bit later. Mount Lemmon, not really showing much at this time, but it is a little bit more congested as you go down towards Douglas and Bisbee. So those could get going as well. And there's those storms in the higher terrain east of Los Angeles. Ron Chalfant is out there somewhere. And yeah, they definitely need that rain for sure. Also, storms around Pahrump and west of Mount Charleston, all the way up towards Area 51 and around, I guess, Austin, Nevada. I think Austin might be a little bit further off to the left. Not really. Can't really remember what's in that region. But it is active, and typically they're about due for convection as we get into August. Another reinforcing shot of cold air coming down from the Dakotas and Montana. That's just north of this polar front boundary, broken up into a series of unstable and stable waves. That would probably be a stable wave right there. Might be more barotropic in nature, very warm conditions out there on the high plains, and that's supporting a bit of a heat low out there in western Nebraska. Across the Midwest, high pressure, light and variable flow, cool conditions out in the northeastern U.S., not much more to say about that. Little thunderstorm out there in New Hampshire, and the usual assortment of showers and thunderstorms in the southeastern U.S. all the way down towards the Gulf Coast. Let's take a look up in Alaska and Yukon. There we are, head up to the north. Looks like they're back in the cold weather pattern, 50s. At the sour, that's going to be lunchtime around Fairbanks, 50, uh, let's see, 57, right there at Fairbanks. And the rest of North Canada, rather cold. 30s, in fact, coming down all the way from the central Canadian Arctic and wrapping around into the seclusion over Baffin Island. And that's a sort of graveyard for decaying frontal systems that come up from Quebec and Labrador, the Hudson Bay region, and they come up there to retire and check out. And speaking of check out, let's check out those records. For today, these are the forecast highs. Reno expecting to break the record set in 2019. Yesterday, they tied the record at 98 degrees. Tomorrow, the heat expands a little bit up into Seattle, expecting 90 degrees, breaking the record set almost 100 years ago, and 95 out around the Portland area. And I guess that's not too much of a heat wave. It's broken by Friday. No records around the country. Saturday, returning to those seasonal normals. No problems on Sunday either. Monday, looking good. And for Tuesday, a little bit of heat starting to show up around Boise, Burns, and 
places in central Oregon. So the heat, not quite done with the western U.S. Another way we can sum up the extremes is with the extreme forecast index. This is a product from the European model. Basically, the yellows and oranges tell you that it's very warm conditions. Blues indicate low temperatures, and the greens higher than average precip, and then the purples are going to be your wind. So this is telling us that there are going to be some cool conditions associated with that monsoon in Arizona, New Mexico, El Paso, some warm conditions lurking offshore off the west coast, especially up north and inland into British Columbia and Alberta. So this is tomorrow's map. Let's go forward. You can see the heat spreads up there into Alberta and Saskatchewan. I don't think we have too many viewers up there. Saturday's map showing that heat spreading into Manitoba and western Ontario. The U.S. looking pretty good, reflecting the seasonal normals. More of the same for Sunday, maybe a little bit of heat up there around Fargo, Minneapolis, and Sioux Falls. Monday's map shows the heat continuing up there in Minnesota, but it's not going to be too severe, maybe 80s, low 90s, maybe something like that. Tuesday's map, no problems. Canada dealing with a little bit of heat on the west and east coast. And Wednesday's map, once again, just focusing on Canada. So there will be some heat problems in the Maritimes, Newfoundland, Alberta, and Saskatchewan, but everywhere else, including the lower 48, looking pretty good. And this is where we take a look at the GFS model. I found it to be fairly accurate at forecasting the Gulf of Mexico, the Western Atlantic. However, over the next seven days, just not really looking for very much. The Bermuda High is in place south of that Bermuda High Ridge. We're getting these easterly waves moving through the Cuban and Dominican Caribbean islands, but just not really doing much. But once we get up to the one week point, that's going to be next Wednesday. You can see things are starting to look a little bit stormy. And this is where the models are starting to get a little bit out of their depth. So we can't really go over the data with a fine tooth comb or anything like that. But we can see that there's a, there's a general tendency for something to develop. I think uh, yesterday or the day before we were seeing activity in Florida, maybe the Carolinas, it was bringing some sort of tropical system through this area. It shifted it back a little bit further to the west. That doesn't really mean much, but overall, I think we are going to be contending with something during the first or second week of September. It could remain out to sea. There's a very strong system. You can see that that one recurves rapidly to the north. So there's a lot of unknowns. We're going to have to wait probably till next week before we have a better handle on this. But, you know, it is late August, September, and we have to start looking at activity down there to the southeast. And this is probably a good time for me to add that if you're in the Gulf Coast region, in Florida, the Carolinas, Virginia, this is a good time to plan ahead and make sure you have the supplies that you need in case of a landfalling hurricane. You don't want to go out and do that right when a storm is bearing down because the stores are going to be cleaned out. Right now is a great time, so get what you need right now while you can. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the precipitable water. We've been looking at this for the past week or two because this is the basis for forecasting this kind of late summer activity. We've been in a stagnant weather pattern for the past two or three weeks, so we've been using this product for the past two or three weeks. And this shows this big glob of moisture along the Gulf Coast all the way up to Mississippi and Arkansas. It's dried out a little bit there in Texas. We've had some northerly flow work into the backside of that wave over Louisiana. And there's also some moisture up there in the northern plains. Haven't really mentioned too much about that just yet, but one to one and a half inch precipitable water evapotranspiration from the agricultural belt, the corn belt, 
has been helping the moisture in that region as well. And of course, advection from the south has been a factor also, but the moisture is a little bit cut off this afternoon. And there's the monsoon moisture extending up towards Las Vegas, and it tapers off to half an inch to one inch out there on the Utah-Nevada border. Okay, let's bring that forward. And you can see a little bit of spin right there with that Louisiana system kind of wandering eastward. So that area will continue to be rainy over the next couple of days. Here comes another impulse of moisture from the Gulf around Saturday or Sunday. That'll probably work into Texas early next week. Yeah, there it is. Two inch amounts surging northward. And that comes up all the way into Arkansas and Oklahoma. So wherever that encounters a boundary, at this point, I can't really tell where that is. There could be a little boundary there, maybe in that troughing right there around Kansas. Wherever there's that interaction, we're likely to get precipitation developing. And it looks like a substantial amount of that will move north into the northern plains, seeing one and a half inch precipitable water up there. And things becoming very moist out there in the Gulf of Mexico, priming the environment for the possible ramp up in tropical cyclone activity. You can see that southern Florida right there getting scraped by two and a half inch precipitable water, which is quite high. You can see the scale only goes up to three, so we're talking significant amounts of water. And there's where the model picks up on a little tropical storm, slings that into Louisiana, but however, this is the fourth and fifth 260 hours out, so that's not going to be accurate but something is likely to interact with that moisture field and come up into Texas, Florida, East Coast, anywhere in there. I would expect somebody's gonna get hit by a tropical cyclone of some sort. And up to the north, here comes some more cold air coming out of Canada. That would be very refreshing about now. Very sticky conditions here in Texas right now. And look at that, a little bit of boundary interaction. Now again, this is model wish casting, model crystal ball territory. But when you have a boundary like that, interacting with the remains of a tropical cyclone, that can be a setup for substantial flooding. So we don't know where that's gonna be, but that's something to look at for the second week of September. And that's all for today. I just got back from Dallas, so I'm a little bit behind schedule. But here's what Dallas looked like yesterday. It is green. They've gotten some rain. Is <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely been a story. And I want to thank our new Patreon supporters. Many thanks to Anna Cake, Chris Hobbs, Benny Webster, Mark St. Dennis, and Michael James Faulkner. Thank you very much for your support. You've all come through, and I appreciate that very much. We'll be back here once again on Friday for another edition of Forecast Lab. Hopefully we'll see you then. Take care, and see you in a couple days. Bye-bye.